Let's cover the idea of function notation for the SAT math section and look at some problems that will be good to know how to solve. So first of all, function notation just means that if you have this f of x equals 5x minus 7 equation, that this function is called f of x. And the rule is you do 5 times the input. The input is whatever is in this parentheses here. You do 5 times the input, you subtract 7. And it says find f of 3. Well, that just means that I'm inputting 3 for the input right here. So f of 3 would equal 5 times the input minus 7. One tip is to put whatever you're putting in for x or for the input in parentheses. Um, it just goes right in there, and you evaluate that. That's going to be 15 minus 7, which equals 8. This is especially helpful for using these parentheses when you're inputting when you have negative numbers and if you're squaring things so you don't get the wrong sign, you know, plus minus sign on your answer. Let's go to number two. If f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 3x, find f of negative 1. So now I'm inputting negative 1 into the input into x here. That's going to be, so I'll just say f of negative 1 is equal to negative 2 times negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1. So in place of both x's, I put negative 1. And again, I use those parentheses. Let's evaluate this. So negative 1 squared, that's 1. Negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2. 3 times negative 1 is going to be negative 3. And we would get negative 5. Um, another way to write this is f of negative 1 is equal to negative 5. So on a graph, that might be my x and y coordinate as well. That would be good to know. So x and y. f of f of x is really saying what's the height. And that's like saying y equals negative 2x squared plus 3x. Let's go down to this next one, number 3. If g of x equals 4x minus 6, find g of x plus 2. So the rule for this g of x function is we do 4 times the input and then subtract 6. Well, this time my input isn't just a number, it's the expression x plus 2. So I'm going to say g of x plus 2 would be equal to 4 times the input, which is x plus 2, and I'll do minus 6. So let's distribute 4. This is going to be 4x um, plus 8, 4 times 2 is 8, minus 6, and that would simplify to 4x plus 2. So g of x plus 2 is equal to 4x plus 2 in its simplified form. Number 4, if g of x equals 2ax plus 7 and g of 3 equals 1, find g of 5. So I'm given one um, kind of like x y value almost here. Okay, so the, the output when I input 3 is 1. And I have to find what is the output when I input 5. That's what I'm trying to find here. And you notice there's another a variable. So that's kind of in the way right now. So I better find out what a is first. And here's what I can do. If I input uh, g of 3, so g of 3, if I input 3, I get 1. And that would be the same as 2 times a times my input 3. That's 2a times 3 plus 7. And now I have an equation where I can solve for a. So this gives me 1 equals uh, 2 times 3 would be 6a plus 7. So let me just, I'll go up here. 1 equals 6a plus 7. I'll subtract 7 on both sides. Negative 6 equals 6a. Ah, that tells me that I get negative 1 is equal to a. So now that I know a, I can find g of 5. So g of 5 is going to be equal to 2 times a is negative 1, negative 1, times 5 is my x. So x, you know, is going to be 5 right here, times 5 plus 7. If I evaluate this, I get 2 times negative 1 times 5. That's negative 10 plus 7. Negative 10 plus 7 is going to be negative 3. So that's what g 
of 5 would be. That's what I get for my function when I input 5 for x. I get negative 3. All right, number 5 says f of x equals ax squared plus 5x plus 2. So that's the rule for my function for f. And f of 4 equals 10. Find f of negative 1. So this is a little bit more complicated than the last one even. But I know if I plug in 4 for x, I get an output of 10. So f of 4 is equal to 10. And that would be a times, in place of x, I'm putting in 4, right? f of 4. a times 4 squared plus 5 times x, which is 4 in this case. 5 times 4 plus 2. So the only variable I have here, the only unknown is going to be a. So let's figure out a. Let's see. 5 times 4, that's 20. Plus 2, that's 22. So 4 squared, that's 16. So we get 16a. This was plus 22. That's equal to 10. We'll subtract 22 on both sides, and I get negative 12 equals 16a. If I divide both sides by 16, negative 12 divided by 16 is negative 3 fourths. So a equals negative 3 fourths. All right? I know a, and now I need to find f of negative 1. So in place of a, I'll put negative 3 fourths. f of negative 1 equals a, that's negative 3 over 4, times, I'm putting in 1 for x, right? Negative 1 squared plus 4. 5 times negative 1. Oh, are we going to have space? We're going to run out of space. Plus 2 right there. I'll put that down there. All right, so if we evaluate this, we'll get our answer. Negative 1 squared is 1. Uh, negative 3 fourths times 1, that's going to be, so let's see, f of negative 1 equals, we just get negative 3 fourths there. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, so minus 5 plus 2. We add this all up negative 5 plus 2, that's negative 3, and another negative 3 fourths. So that all would equal negative 3 and 3 fourths. Or I could say that's negative 15 fourths as well. So there we go. There's some function notation basics for the SAT that will be helpful to know on the uh, test.